radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacker or a convicted villain. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800. 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Father's Day coming up, and I just think that guys uh, get a bum rap. But not only that, uh, we do not appreciate what men do. Women do not appreciate what men do. That is reflected in Father's Day cards, reflected in advertising. It's reflected in dopey sitcoms. Where the man always forgets birthdays, forgets anniversaries, drinks too much, hogs the remote. You know the, you know the shows. You know what I'm talking about. And as we approach Father's Day, I think we should think about, uh, uh, giving our fathers real appreciation for what they've done. And, um, I've also recommended on this program as we approach Father's Day that if your mom and dad got divorced and your mom says your dad's a creep, that you seek him out. Plan on spending a day or a weekend with him and find out what makes him tick. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-866. Let's say hello here to Louie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Padre. Hello, son. How you doing, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Hey, Tom, you know... Speaking about the dads and, and, you know, Father's Day, my dad is in Mexico. The migra got him and deported his baloney body over there to uh, to Tijuana. So, you know, I kind of miss him, you know, on Father's Day. But uh, Maybe you should go see him. Well, he's not in TJ no more. He's in Guadalajara, and, you know, I can't, I can't afford it. All right. I'm just going to give him a little call. But uh, earlier you were talking to this chick about... Uh, her man being the loser, right? And, uh, well, I, I ask, you know, I, I have a question. How do you become, you know, a successful person, you know, someone that's not a loser? How do you do that? First well, of all, I, I consider myself a loser. You know, I'm 24 and I'm making less money than what she was making. Yeah. Uh, and how long have you been married? Yes. How? That's a question. How? And the, the yes or no is not the answer. How old were you when you got married? I was 18. 18. That's part of the reason. That's part of the reason you're a loser. Mm -hmm. Why did you have to get married at 18? You knocked her up? I, I'm not what I'm sorry? Why did you have to get married at 18? Well, because I fell in love, you know, and I just... That doesn't matter. You don't... You know, when you're 18, you fall in love with every other girl you meet. Yeah, that's true. Huh. <laughs> But, I mean, she's a really good person right now. Uh, and she'd be a good person when you're 25. And, then, and if she really loved you, she'd still be around when you're 25. And you should have spent the years of 18, 19, 20, and 21 going to college, which I'm sure you didn't. I didn't. Right. Yeah. So now she makes more money than you do. Did she go to college? Uh, yes, she does. She I mean, did. No. And I'll bet you help pay for it, too. Uh, what do you mean? She pays for it. Do you don't help her? Well, I, 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 I could help her, you know, what I'm making, but she makes more money than me right now. <laughs> Did you help her pay for college, yes or no? Uh, not quite. What does not quite mean? Well, I only, you know, whenever she doesn't have enough money, you know, to cover the monthly, you know. That's my point. Yes, you do. You help her pay for college. Yeah. The money doesn't go directly to the college. She pays the college and you pay the rent. Yes. Yeah. Right? So not only not only did you give up college so you could bone your wife, <laughs> you then made it possible for her to become more successful than you. And do you know what eventually happens to people like you, Louie? Eventually, when your wife is really successful and you're not, she starts telling her friends that she feels, like, embarrassed because you're such a loser. Yeah, that's what everyone tells me. Well, there you go. And how do you know all this stuff? I've been around the block a few times, Louie. like if you're my neighbor, you know me. <laughs> I know you like a book. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's you know, that's 
That's the thing right now. So. Yeah, that's what happens. People get married at 18, Louis. And it does get in my head. You know, sometimes I, I go over to sleep at night and I think about it. Damn, what if, what if she one day, you know, she talks about me, you know, with her friends because she's majoring in criminal justice. So. She, oh, is she going to be an attorney? No, she's going to be a parole officer, probation. I see. Yeah, so she's going to make more money than me. I know that, you know. What do you do for a living, Louis? I uh I sell auto glass at a company. Auto gas? Auto glass. What's that? Auto glass, the windshield. Auto glass. glass. Yes, glass. Oh yeah. Well, next time, uh, next time I drive behind a gravel truck on the freeway, I'll think of you, Louis. <laughs> hey, can you uh, can you blow me up with uh, JFK? <laughs> Senior or junior? Senior. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tasteless as ever. <laughs> Louis is the king of auto glass. It's great. I can't figure out why people think I'm a loser. I got married at 18. I helped my wife pay for college so she can go study criminal justice. We smashed the competition. <laughs> we smashed the competition. That's right. <laughs> Louis. I can't figure out why people think I'm a loser. Everybody says it. <laughs> Get Louie on the phone. <laughs> Louie, my insurance company's paying for this. Can you, uh, can you, uh, <laughs> my insurance company's not paying for this. Can you, uh, cut me a deal? That's Louie's day. Holy Christ. 1-800-5800. People think I'm a loser. They all say it. Beatrice on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Do you care? Of course I do. I love you. I love the show. Really? I listen to it every day. My coworkers get so mad at me. I work around girls. <laughs> Why do you listen to that guy? I love that guy. Yeah, anyway, Sam, I was listening to a couple people that called and um, that they found out that their parents um, lied to them and um, their dads were, were not are not who they thought they were. Well, um, I'm 26. I just found out that my dad's not my dad. You know, I kind of saw it coming because, to be honest, you know, I just, I just have, like, so many hard feelings for my mom, and I have to admit that she is kind of slutty, you know? She's kind of a bitch. Ever since I can remember, it's really? like I... What's her number? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she would appreciate, you know, getting a call from Tom. <laughs> <laughs> she hates it. I love Tom. <laughs> Your daughter tells me you're kind of slutty. Yeah. I mean, you know, I kind of like Tom, you know, when you're a child, you remember, you know, you have a lot of childhood memories. I always saw the presence of another guy, you know? And uh, the cause for my parents' divorce was over that guy that my mom cheated on him. Later on, she cheated on that guy with somebody else. Well, then later she cheated on that person with somebody else. So, you know, it's just like she just keeps doing the same. No wonder she hates my show. Oh, yeah, she hates it. Because the truth has to be told. Yeah, and then she complains. She's like, oh, when are you going to have, when are you going to give me grandkids? I'm like, I'm not having kids to give them the same quality as like you gave me. No. She'd probably get knocked up again herself. Well, yeah. How old is really? your mom? She is 45. 45? Yeah. So she got knocked up when she was 18. Yeah, she had me around um, 18, 19, I would say. No, I'm saying she got knocked up at 18, had you at 19. Yeah. No, boy. <laughs> and she's still going out there, probably has like a profile online or something, right? Yeah, you know, um, I was listening to your show a couple of weeks ago. They say that um, women in their 40s go to the bars and they buy young men drinks. Yeah. I just can't imagine my mom like that. But you know what? I'm, I wouldn't doubt she does that. You think you're, is your mom a MILF? You know what? <laughs> it's hard to admit, but I believe so. <laughs> yeah, is that so? I think so. She's a cougar? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. You know, as much as I love my mom, let's be realistic here. And <laughs> your, your, your mom wants to become a gilf. I guess so. But that's why you have to have a kid. Yes, that's why. <laughs> I don't know kids for me. I'm happy the way I am. Really? Unbelievable. Yeah. 
Yes. That's and I, I hate I hate to hear, um, especially our Latin people. I'm Latin. I'm Colombian. I hate to hear um, Latin people call your station. Oh, child support. Oh, I don't know who the daddy is. Like that girl that just called like ten fifteen minutes ago. Yeah. I hate I hate when people have kids. They're they're like bunnies. They just can't stop having kids. And you know, Latinos, you shut up. Are getting. It's terrible when oh. you know their kids are going to end up doing the same thing. So you've got a problem with the Latinos who call in? No, I'm Latin, you know. But yeah. I mean, I just hate to see that stereotype of that Latin people just having Latinos. You shut up. And uh, being single parents. Yes. Yes, that's yes. an issue that I've always had and. Maybe that's why I don't want to have kids. I mean, I don't want to fall for that stereotype. I understand. And that, do you have a boyfriend? You know, I don't have a boyfriend. I don't. I don't like. I like to have. I don't like issues in my life. You know, I had a boyfriend. He works um, supervisor for an airline in uh, LAX. He proposed to me last year. I'm like, are you kidding? I'm too young to be married. Maybe when I'm 45. When Good I'm for you. Lonely, maybe when I'm a lonely old woman. <laughs> Who needs your mom's number? What's your number? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I love life without commitments. You know, I was responsible, but no strings attached, no commitments. Fan life without complications. Fantastic. Well, good for you, Beatrice. I'm proud of you. And uh, did your mom is a slut. Now the whole world knows. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's only appropriate to give her a compliment if you could give the same compliment to a man. But, wow, that's the fastest I've ever seen anybody change the tire. Or <laughs> you know, it, it has to be a generic situation. <laughs> If you give them, wow, you look great today, what they heard is, hey, he's buying me a wedding ring. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. Eight hundred Tom, as we approach Father's Day, we are looking at dads and their roles. And as opposed to looking at chicks and their roles. Speaking of which, we were watching a uh, we were watching a gal softball game on Fox Sports Net. Those are some porkers. Oh, baby, take a look at that. This is what they run on Fox Sports Net during the day when they don't have the Lakers, they don't have you know the Dodgers or the Angels to run, and probably wherever you are, whatever your local teams are. They got big fat girls playing softball right now. Oh, the Philadelphia Fupas? Uh huh. <laughs> playing the New England Clams. It's a big match. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, oh Josh. Josh on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much. Well, you guys are talking about long lost dads. I, my, the guy I grew up with, I thought was my dad, and I found out when I was 18 he is not, but my mom still doesn't know I know. How did you find out? Well, you know, I was sitting down at the DMV getting my, my driver's permit and just took the test, and I'm sitting in the chair like three feet back from the counter, and I hear my mom say, the adoption papers for the last name haven't gone through, but this is the name we want on there. And it hit me like a brick wall. I couldn't believe it. And because wow. uh, I, had, I had grown up with with the same guy basically all my life, and uh, and so I waited till I was eighteen, and kind of curiosity got to me, and I asked my grandma about it, and uh, and she basically opened up like a hope chest full of all my real dad stuff. Jeez. Yeah. That's outrageous. So what does that do to your Father's Day? <laughs> there never really has been one. Yeah. To be honest with you, until until I became a father myself, uh, it was just another day. Wow! And I've never told my mom I go to this day, and uh, you know, and, and give my mom some credit. I guess she never hit him up for any child support or anything. And, and he was a professional hockey player, won the cup the year I was born, and uh, you know, she could have taken him through the ringer, I guess. But uh, that's it. And uh, did you spend time with your dad? No, I've never met him. He doesn't know anything. He knows I was born because 
my grandma, I guess, like season tickets um, when I was an infant. And then she would just take me. They, they split custody or, you know, taking care of me. So my grandma would take me at night when my mom was working. And, uh, and then, you know, once he retired, he went on his way. I think he was married. I know he was much older than my mom, so it was one of those situations where I, he probably had a family of his own with kids and whatnot back up in Canada. So he doesn't know, you know, I know, and my mom doesn't know. Do you have any interest in, in meeting him? You know, I, I was dying to meet him from the time I was, you know, 15 and a half when I, when I found out till I was 18. And, and yeah, once I kind of became a man and whatever, I figured I didn't want to kind of disturb whatever happy life he had up there and, you know, what kind of shock it would be to his wife and kids and whatnot. So I just kind of dropped it and, and said, well, enough and no. It wasn't a situation where he didn't know I was born. He obviously knew I was, I was out there. And I have, like, hundreds of newspapers and articles, and I've done research on him. He opened, a, I guess, a real famous hockey school up in Canada and whatnot. Um, so I, I know about him and, and just left the well enough alone. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. So I'm not even sure what that is. It's public now. We're on the air. Oh, I know. Yeah, but yeah, but he doesn't even know it. He he doesn't know that I know. Yeah, definitely. But he, well, he would know now. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody guess, if somebody from like uh, ESPN was listening, or if somebody from the sports section of the LA Times was tuned well, in, he he opened a hockey school with with uh, another another guy. I forget the guy's name, Larry something also, and yeah. uh, and they all knew. Yeah, he dated. It wasn't like a one night stand. I mean, basically, my mom was his girlfriend when he lived in Houston, and his family and whatnot was all from Canada. Oh my! So, so it was. He, he wasn't hiding it from like his, his compadres and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't know that that you're his son. He doesn't know. Doesn't know. Oh, he, he knows. Oh, he, he knows. knows. Yeah, he gave my grandma tickets to to like come see him at night and whatnot. It's just my grandma just kind of snuck me out and never told my mom like, hey. You know, I'm doing this or whatever, and my grandma never told, and I've never told my mom that, hey, you know, the, the word's out and whatnot. You, were, you first got suspicious when you went out uh, to karaoke with your mom, and uh, everybody was picking a song they, they wanted to sing, and she requested this one. And you're saying, wait a minute, how can you do karaoke? That song doesn't have any lyrics. <laughs> and then, then you start to become suspicious, right? Hey, 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 you can't say that word on the oh, air. Yeah, I'm sorry and get carried away. Uh, for basically being, being a slut and, and doing what she did, you know, she didn't take him through the ringer and just kind of, you know, let him go on his way once he retired and went back to his life. Wow. So, uh, that being said, I kind of respected that same opinion and said, hey, you know, it, he knows I'm born and I'm out there and, and uh, whatnot, so... You know, if he hasn't found me, then I'd leave him alone and go the same way. Wow. I'm just lucky enough I got to do some research and kind of find out what kind of guy he was, for, you know, where he's born and what he looks like. And I got, you know, all the stuff. I got game jerseys and all the, you know, stuff that a normal kid would have. Wow. That's yeah, an, wild, huh? Th th that is an amazing story. And you have no interest in initiating contact with him. No, you know, I did I did for a couple of years. I mean, obviously, when I, I jumped in my truck five minutes before I, um, I called in, so I just heard a glimpse, but I obviously calling in, I, I was thinking, you know, something came about or, you know, something came up about this. I, I, I wouldn't be refuse it, but I, no, I'm not putting any effort into it. Hang on a second here, Josh. Steven, what did you want to say to Josh? Hey, Josh, what's up, man? What's up, bud? Uh, I say we call your dad right now on the air and... Uh... Ask him uh, how he feels about this. More power to you. If you guys can find his number, I, I, like I said, I mean, I'm not opposed to it. I just uh, I haven't put an effort in myself. Well, you know, we could. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm sure though, uh, your screener had pulled it up. He he opened, I guess, which is is like was one of the most famous hockey schools up in Banff, Canada area, and and whatnot. I'm sure he's not too hard of a guy to track down. In Banff, Banff, Banff is uh, where in uh, Ontario. It's uh, it's. I to be honest with you, I know it's north of Washington, but I don't know how far. Um, I've just done a little research on them on the internet. Yeah. And then actually, your screener pulled it up and did and, and pulled up the kind of same stuff I had. Wow. Oh, uh, we have some contacts. I'm sure we can find. <laughs> well, more power to you. Let's. Uh, did you want that, Josh? Did you want to stay on the air and talk to him? Oh, I don't mind at all. 
Uh, oh, nice. I'll tell you what. Good. There you go, Stephen. You see, you made a suggestion. It's a good one. All right, Josh, hang on there. Okay. And uh, Dean is going to talk to you, and we'll see uh, We'll see if we can make this happen. Now, there's a Father's Day. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Will on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Will. Hello, Father. How I you doing? You. I failed you. How so? I finally got married at four year old. <laughs> Why'd you do that? Uh, I found someone that made me comfortable. But now, uh, the reason I'm calling, it wasn't that. That's just my failure to you, my father. Wow, wow. Uh, the, the, the talk about all the, dude, where were you in the 80s? Seriously. Um, I, I was on to... AM radio right here in Los Angeles. Will, where uh, were you? I was in East Los Angeles. Well, I was here. With nobody to talk to. And you said, talk to that girl earlier about that, uh, you know, that her boyfriend's a loser and da 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 da. I was that loser once upon a time. Oh, really? Was, uh, oh, heck yeah, man. I was like, I was fresh out of, you know, the county jail and met this girl who was five years older than me. She had kids. I didn't know it. And when I found out, it's like I broke it up because I was like, oh, screw that. I mean, yeah, she was married. I didn't even know that. Wow. I was, like, I was like, forget this nonsense. I'm out of here. Wow. And the reason the way I found out was I was working at a DWP at the time. And I was like, okay, she worked there too, and that's how I met her. And I was like, all right, cool. So I showed up like at work, and she wasn't there because I went out with the guys the night before. So she I was like, oh, damn, she's mad. So I took flowers, you know, and I was like, all right, I'll go to her house. You know, make it up. She, you know, she's probably just pissed at me. And when I got there, you know, a guy answers the door. I'm like, hey, who's your name? He's like, uh, who are you? I'm like, uh, is your, are you Tito? No, because she told me she had brothers. Tito and I don't even remember the last guy, but I was like, all right, you know, are you Tito? He's like, no. And I said, are you the other guy? He goes, no. She goes, I'm her husband. I was like, what? I just left the flowers, turned around in my DWP truck, and went on a drinking binge, bro. <laughs> I was like... I finally showed up at the DWP station downtown three days later, and the manager's like, we need to talk. I go, no, I quit. I quit. I can't deal with this. This is ridiculous. Anyways, three years later, I get a notice from the child support office of the district of training saying, you are being sued for child support and paternal relations. And I was like, huh? And I I'm not saying I didn't have relations with the woman, but I'd like to see the baby because, you know, I mean, she was married and I didn't know it at the time. And I'd like to know if this is my child or not. I, they, and then the district attorney tells you, you want to take a blood test? Like, uh, well, if, if that's possible, yeah, well, if it's your child, you get to pay for it. If it's not, you don't. I'm like, uh, okay. I didn't have any money at the time, didn't even have steady employment. So I was like, what? All right, whatever. So I didn't do the blood test, but I met my son in Monterey Park at Cascades Park, and I went through the back. I had this beat-up little bug, uh, and I pulled up the backside, and I looked down. I'm like, oh, Christ, I'm a father. Because the little kid just looked just like me. I mean, a spitting image. I was like, what? For the first three years of my life, well, he was three years at the time, and for the next three years of my son's life, his mother didn't let me see him on a constant basis, and I struggled with her. I mean, it's like my, my grandmother, my mother, every, when are you going to bring Stephen over? When are you going to bring Stephen over? And I was like, dude, you know, I, I can't make her let me have him to visit, you know, even though I'm paying child support. But, you know, it just it, it kept going. And now it's like my son's 17, flash forward, you know. And he lives uh, in an apartment building. She doesn't live there. She collects child support. And, you know, it's like, dude, what the heck? Child Yikes. support services say, oh, if you give us some proof, we'll do something. I'm like, you know what, what's the point? What's the point, seriously? I, the, the, you know what? I, <laughs> it can only take so much. Ouch. Uh, one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. That's our telephone number. Dustin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. 
Hey, Tom, how's it going? Okay. Well, I called in originally because I'm listening online out here in Tempe, uh, but uh, I guess he told me to change it to be on subject, and the subject happened to be something I can go on forever about. I mean, I would probably have one of the most dysfunctional families out of all the people I know, unfortunately, and um, January, I just had to go to rehab for my father, who was in there for alcohol, but the thing is, is he's one of those, like, what you'd call a functioning alcoholic, where he's always provided for his family, but just been completely horrible with relationships and stuff, but the thing is, is like, both my parents come from, like, the South, and they're really poor, and both grandmothers right. grew up in orphanages, and I don't know the grandfathers, but... Yeah. I don't know. I just wanted your advice on one thing, though, because my mom always tells me when I'm d drinking, when she sees me drinking, that she reminds me just as my, the same as my father. Well, why is she surprised about that? <laughs> I don't know. But um, I feel like it's something I can control or whatever, you know? Well, you can't. You I mean, chances are scary. if your dad's an alcoholic, you're going to have these issues. Yeah. Do you get out of control? No. No? Not really. I mean, just I'd say on par with everybody else that's 20 years old and living right. in be. All right. Well, you got to watch it, though. If your dad's an alcoholic, those things do run in families. you got to watch it. Yeah. Got to. Gotcha. All right. And um, I just wanted to say also that I'm out here in Tempe, and I'm spreading the word about your show, not just to make you more money or make your show better, even though that wouldn't be a bad thing, because I just want the world to be a better place. And I think you're probably, what you tell people to do is the best. Hey, you can't say that word on the air. Oh, my bad, my bad, Tom. I won't, I won't mess up again. You can't, you can't settle down with one girl and get serious in a relationship when you're so young you got to focus on your goals and what you want out of life first you know that's of course what you have to do yeah you you have to do that there's no point in settling down and getting in a relationship because god wouldn't have made our dna or whatever you believe in evolution our dna wouldn't be this way to spread our seed if we are meant to settle down with one person because there's no such thing as one person, male or female, finding one person for the rest of their life. It's stupid to think that. Well, we keep trying to do it, but uh, we keep failing, don't we? Yeah, exactly. That's why my parents are divorced, and every single male in my family that's been married has been is divorced. <laughs> and they've all given money to some other chick. Yeah, it's not a surprise why I love your show. <laughs> Not at all, Dustin. Hey, Dustin, thanks a lot for the call. Good luck, by the way. Wow. It's the pre-Father's Day edition of the Tom Likas Show, and we're talking uh, with uh, people about their attitudes about their dads. Uh, sometimes their dads don't even know that they exist. Sometimes they've been told their dad is a loser or a jerk or a drug addict or an alcoholic. Sometimes it's true. Sometimes it's not. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Richard on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Uh, I was calling about Louie who says he feels like he's a loser and the girlfriend tells him he's a loser or his wife. He got married when he was 18. Right. Um, you know, just because the guy feels like he's a loser doesn't mean he's a loser. If he's taking care of his family and putting food on the table, he's not a loser. Well, but uh, what's going to happen? as it happens so often, is the woman he puts through school, because this is how many women are, the woman he's putting through school one day will realize, you know, I've got a degree in criminal justice and my husband is a, is a glass salesman. What a loser. That's what's going to happen. But if it's paying the bills, then he's not I, a loser. Why do you if assume she's going, going to recognize it. that? He, all his friends are telling him he's a loser. Well, then, then he's dumb because, you know what? Anybody he's dumb be, because his friends call him a loser? If you let somebody tell you you're a loser, then there's something wrong. Well, I, with you or your self-esteem. Well, you can't. And people have a right to an opinion. And that's what they're all saying. You're a loser. No way. You know, I'm a painting contractor. 
I've made a pretty good living. I take care of my family. I have a home. I have a car. Yes, but remember, you, you own a business. You're a painting contractor. You're not a painter. But I grind it out. Like, everybody else put food on the table. The point is, though, you... When the, the times were tough... That, hey, I'm grinding it out. But I'm remember, just, you are a business owner, okay? You own a business. That's not the same as the guys you hire to do a paint job. Well, but I started out as the guy that I hired to do a paint job. Right, and and you had some smarts, and you put together a business out of it. But I still grinded it out. I still work for people. A lot of I work for different contractors when I sub work and stuff like that from other people. It doesn't make me a loser. But you still own a business. Because I'm taking business from somebody but else. But you still own work. a business. You own a business. You know what? That's an accomplishment. You're demeaning your own accomplishment here. Owning, no, 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 no. Owning a business myself. is I'm an accomplishment. Like Louis, and it sets you apart from Louis. He doesn't, he doesn't own an auto glass business. He works for one. But if he put his mind to it, he could be... But he doesn't bigger. put his mind to anything. He hasn't thought about anything. He admitted to me in the course of the conversation. Uh, I said to him, uh, he, why did you get married at 18? Well, love to. So I said, well, uh, don't, don't you fall in love with every other woman you meet when you're 18? Well, yeah. Well, you know, I got married when I was 21. You know, I got married real young, at a young age. And you know we grinded it out for a lot of years. Our first apartment, one you're, chair. You're just a you're just a human grinder. Yeah, that's all you can do. You know, some people just gotta grind it, and other people get it going good. You know. But uh, hey, you know, I got one question for you. I got a good question for you. Yeah. You know, you said you had tickets to the Laker game, and you're going to take the, some hot chick that's going to put out right. When you take this girl to the game. That means you don't buy her no drinks or nothing. You don't spend no money on her. I spent zero. Okay. I uh, uh, the the last time I went to a Laker game, one of these Laker games, I spent zero on the chick who was with me. Zero. 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 I <clears throat> I didn't buy her a bottle of water. Nothing. And she bought her own stuff. I, if she had anything, she bought it. I I don't I didn't keep track of what she was consuming. All I'm telling you is I spent nothing. So you never spend no money on none of these girls, no matter what. I never said none. I said the, the maximum forty bucks. Okay, so you but you do spend, but forty bucks is the limit. I I say it all the time. Forty bucks is the limit. Okay, well you do spend money on them then. I, but, uh, again, but I have said forty bucks. Yeah, everybody who listens to the show knows about the forty dollar limit. Okay. I mean, why, why are you acting like you've never heard of that before? No, because I never have. How, how long have you been a listener? I, every once in a while, I listen to you. On All right. Well, we uh, we talk about that. It's a forty dollar limit. Uh huh. And that's it. Yes, so because the liquor game tonight. It takes a certain amount of alcohol. Are you going to the liquor game tonight? Yes, I am. Is that right? Well, that's good for you. Yes, I am. And you're taking a hottie with you. Uh, I'm taking somebody who's so hot you won't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> you're all right. You know, you're Tall, okay, hot. <laughs> you're okay. Dark hair. Oh, boy. You give a lot of guys hope, Tom. <laughs> You see me at the game tonight, you'll see who I'm with. Okay, I, I'll be looking for you from the TV stand. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah maybe, maybe they'll catch a glimpse of Maybe they'll get us on the kiss cam. There you go. <laughs> well, it was good talking to you. Like I said, that guy, he's a loser because he wants to be a loser, you know. <laughs> and, and you can't let people call you a loser. you got to stand up for Unless you. you are a loser. The reason he doesn't stop yeah. people from calling him a loser is because he is a loser. Yeah, maybe. I've always told my son, uh... He's a loser, for Christ's sake! Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Hey, doing the Lord's work, Father. Keep it up. It's the Tom Like It Show. Oh, yeah, the Tom Like It Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Jeff is streaming our show in Ohak, California. I'm the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Okay. Hi, aren't you going to ask me if I care? Uh, no, I'm trying, trying to cut to the chase. Here. Okay. 
Did I lose you? No, what am I supposed to say now? Uh, I, forgive me. I, I, I finished saying something. This is how a dialogue works. I finished saying something there's a period at the end. And then if you're watching it as a script in the dialogue, the next line is usually the other character in the dialogue who then speaks. I appreciate the edification. I uh, was uh, informed three months after my son was born that I had a son. And I appreciate how much you stress to the boys and girls out there playing around that they should be wearing condoms, especially uh, that they should use or or be uh, wearing condoms. It's, it was uh, quite a shocking experience. I'm sure it was. And uh, then did you get nailed for child support and everything? No, I did not, actually. Really? Yeah. How'd you get off the hook? Uh, I, I guess she just didn't need it or didn't pursue it or... Or hasn't pursued it yet? Uh, I have a buddy who's a uh, family lawyer says it's too late at this point. Too he's, late? He's over 21, and they've known for three years. I, In fact, I offered him money uh, after he graduated college to go on a trip. He, uh, I guess they're, they're fairly self-sufficient. Wow. Yeah. So I guess that was the only happy part of it. The The tough part is having, a well, from my perspective, anyhow, having a, a, a part of you out in the world and not knowing what's going on. And have you ever met your son? Yeah, I met him. Uh, I, I reintroduced myself into his life uh, when he was about 20. So it was about five years ago. And um, how did he feel about that? Uh, he's a pretty cool kid. Uh, he, he, it was awkward, of course. It's just an awkward moment because, you know, he, he knew he, the numbers didn't add up in terms of who was in his life and who wasn't in his life. And he, he knew that there must have been someone else and his mom. You know, it was just one of those things that was never spoken of. Wow. Yeah, pretty intense. And, actually, and did, do you remember his mom? Yes. How, I mean, how long were you dating her? Uh, you know, uh, someone I met in uh, basically in a social situation and saw her a few times, and that was about it. Wow, wow, wow. What a story. Phew. one eight hundred five eight hundred. tom It's summer on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Well, I have one of those classic, my mom is, she tried to keep me and my father apart my entire life. Um, my father moved to Alaska to get ri to get away from her. She's everything, you know, bad that we've been talking about as far as, you know, what to do wrong with um, keep with a mother and child relation father and child relationship. And um, I had to track my father down, actually. And when I found him in Alaska, um, he was dying of cancer and I flew out to see him. And it gave him a new will to live. And he went to um, another part of Alaska to get some medical records because he was going to move out to spend the end of his life with me. And he was murdered by the Alaska State Troopers two years oh ago. Oh, my God. But my mom had spent my entire... Happy Father's Day. Yeah. Um, he actually died on Father's Day. And, oh, um, my God. Well, that is certainly ending this hour on an upbeat note. I'll tell you what. Unbelievable. Our email address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.